The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling to the Max, the Survivor Series 2017 review, and we are brought to you by W2Mnet.com, the place where you'll find all your great wrestling needs and a lot more. Don't forget to go subscribe and rate review over there at Wrestling to the Max. That'll get you all our great review shows, plus every episode of Wrestling to the Max that you can get your hands on. And don't forget to go give some love over to FormOneMania.com and last word on ProWrestling.com. Both are great supporters. Make sure you give them some love as well. I am your host, Gary Vaughn, and along with me tonight is Mr. Sean Garmer. Sorry, I just realized I was on uh, the speaker mute. <laughs> it's okay. So, yeah. I, I should have said something else, but I was like, well, maybe it's about to pop in. About to not. Yeah, hey, that's okay. You had some audio things. Make sure you uh, take care of business outside of uh, clicking and all that stuff for people to hear. So, uh, But yeah, but not with us tonight is Paul Leeser. Uh, that is because he was there live at Survivor Series. He also was at TakeOver War Games as well. So the guy had a blast this weekend. I can't wait to hear about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So come check out our episode of Wrestling of the Max this week. Uh, that'll be, of course, Tuesday morning on the download for everyone. Make sure you check it out because you'll get some live introspective on what happened at those shows. Uh, I, you know, am really excited about talking about the Survivor Series. And I'm, I'm just glad to be able to sit here and talk to uh, my one of my best friends in the world, Sean, about this. You know, it's, it's kind of a fun show. And uh really looking forward to getting into everything that starts it out. Uh, before we get into the actual main card of this, I do want to make sure we mention the two pre-show matches that were there. I watched two of them. Uh, if there were more, I missed them. I just saw the two. So uh, We had, of course, the Cruiserweight title at stake uh, with Enzo Amore and Kalisto. A, a decent match between those two. Um, you get what you get usually. Uh, I, I think they did a decent back and forth in that match. But, if, you know, you're going to have Enzo win. It was expected. Enzo, you know, he won. There you go. And the other match here we had was just kind of an impromptu style. They had both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out to the ring and kind of do their shtick about – being upset that they're not a part of the Survivor Series team for SmackDown and how hey, shame man screwed him over. And uh, they need to get the fashion police to investigate this. Well, that spurs the fashion police to come out and to give those two guys tickets for wardrobe uh, violations. <laughs> so <laughs> they uh, do that. And, of course, that spurs a match. And. It really didn't take a whole lot. Uh, you have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn take the victory there, too. So I, nothing super spectacular. I, I, Sean, I don't even know if it's really worth saying much more about. But I, I think that, that we just needed to mention them. Uh, is that fair enough? <laughs> well, you also had the kickoff match of Matt Hardy versus Elias. Oh, I missed well, that one. I told which, you. Uh, which Elias won. Okay. See, I missed that one. So, uh, well, I, I'm sure that was a decent match. I, I can't say anything about it. But, you know, this is a pre-show for a reason, right? We yeah, just... I, th- that was the kickoff match to the pre-show. It's, it was fine. It's it's fine. It's just, yeah, like you said, I mean, these matches are kind of just, that's why they're on that part of the show. Mm-hmm. Right. So, 
Uh, let's talk about the main part of the show, which I think everybody listening is wanting to hear about. <laughs> and it's the big matches that we had been built up to for the last month. It is really kind of a dream match, I think, for a lot of people to see this because, you know, this has been brewing for a little while. This has been something that people are really interested in. That's the Shield versus New Day. You know, New Day has been a hot tag team for a long while now. And, of course, the Shield is one of the more popular tag teams of the modern age in WWE. So this was, uh, you know, just as good as ever. Of course, the New Day, you know, start the whole thing out by coming down to the ring and basically getting their spiel about the shield and how they're really not brothers like the new day and the new day are the best and all that good stuff. So that was kind of fun, but the match itself, Sean, boy, this was a really, really fun match to watch. I think, you know, we got a lot of the expected things. The one thing that I didn't expect is the Ambrose to take all the heaviest hits (laughs) in this match. It seemed like if someone was getting beat down, it was going to be Dean Ambrose. Uh, So he took a lot of hits. Uh, you had, you know, uh, some really good spots in this match. The match, you know, gets to the point at times where you have some close finishes, but what we do have at the end here is the shield hitting the big Cerebus bomb off the top rope to Kofi Kingston, who does take the pin and you have Roman Reigns securing that victory for the shield. This is one of those matches, though, Sean, despite the fact that, you know, you may or may not have thought it met the expectations. It was just fun. No, yeah, exactly. It was just fun. And New Day started the fun at the beginning with the, uh, you know, making uh, Big Guts references for for some low-hanging fruit there. And then you had, you know, them just... Here comes the shield, and I, the people were really into this. Of course, you have the two biggest factions in the entire uh, WWE still going at it that have been around. Uh, I thought we might get something with Ambrose here turning or something like that. We didn't get it. I guess they're going to say that for a Raw, which is probably better because it has more impact there. For you said it, though. There's a lot of big moves happening you know you get the normal Big E spear to the outside and Ambrose took a lot of the major hits from New Day uh, but we kind of figured it would be Roman doing his thing to to get the team back in it uh, they do you get a super shield bomb uh, for the win and this is a great match that kicked off the show I mean talk about beginning it with style you you got the crowd into it you got them ready to go and and i don't think you could ask for anything better yeah i think you're right and you know to kick off the survivor series show the main part of the show they did a great job they really did and it got the crowd excited i think i think they really were pumped for this match so not a not a bad deal if you ask me and i'm really kind of curious to see you know how a lot of other people are going to react to it and of course i would love to see some of the reactions we'll get later on i'm sure this week with new day you know some of the comments they may make about the match or even maybe the shield uh so it's gonna be kind of fun i think this is definitely one uh, of maybe many hopefully in the future uh if we can ever get that far within you know the shield before they break up because i think this is a good matchup for both these teams uh, but yeah, I mean, we do have the Shield getting the victory, so that means that Raw gets a point, and so they are on the board. Uh, but now we move on to the Raw Women's and SmackDown Women's match. What we have here, this Survivor Series match between both brands for the ladies, and this is one that I mean, you had before the match, we had Stephanie McMahon pumping up the Raw team, like, you know, talking to each lady and telling them about how they are going to be and what they should do and things like that. And, you know, it's, it's it, I think it was a kind of a fun moment because you kind of got her the chance to see Stephanie do some Raw Raw, right? I mean, you don't usually see that a lot with her. Usually yeah, it's her demeaning people. She's cutting body parts. She's, she's cutting <laughs> body parts down normally. 
Yeah. <laughs> Usually she's tearing you apart instead of building you up. And she even built Alicia Fox up. So I, I think that kind of shows you how far she had to go to, to get her team inspired. But boy, were they inspired. Uh, this, you know, had a, a, some really good stuff. I mean, uh, they start out this whole thing and you have the captains of the teams facing off against each other. You have Alicia Fox and Becky Lynch kind of starting it all. But the way this whole thing rounds out is you actually have Bailey tagged in and she ends up rolling up Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch, the team captain for SmackDown. One of the people that we kind of felt like maybe at the end of this match did not even survive. Uh, She was the first one taken out. You had other big moments in this match like you had um, – Oh, I'm, I guess I should look at my list here. Uh, but there's uh, some really big matches, moments, and when they have the uh, Tamina and um, oh Nia god, Jax. Sean, Nia Jax interaction, yeah, yeah, where they have they the had... alternating headbutts, and then uh, Tamina eventually knocks Nia out of the ring, and Nia gets eliminated with the the count out. Yes. A big moment there. That was, and that's some of those matches that people have been talking about in the past, right, Sean? People were like, "Oh man, could this ever happen?" You know, they're kind of family, all that kind of stuff. And it, you, you get a chance to see that sneak peek if they ever had a big match between each other. But yeah, you're right. Nia Jax getting counted out was a big deal too, because you kind of thought you can't eliminate her, right? We can't have anybody beat her down. That was the safe way to get her out of the match without it beat down. You have a lot of other stuff going on in this match, but what you end up with at the end is really interesting. You have Sasha Banks finally taken out, which left one of the people that we figure would be, you know, left in this match. And that is Oscar for the raw team. The sole member of the raw team left. And then you had Natalia and Tamina and, uh, Oscar just kind of went through and took him out. I mean, it didn't take much for her to, to finish this thing out for the Raw team. So solo, she gets the victory for Raw, and Raw gets the second point. I, I think they showcased a lot of these ladies pretty well, but this was really about Oscar at points, Sean. I kind of felt like that's the whole point of this match was to build her up. Well, yeah, that's what this whole match was about, was building up Oscar, And, of course, her being the sole survivor – was the important part of this. I just felt like a lot of this match was kind of just there. And the the eliminations kind of just seemed to happen. And people didn't really care too much about them. Also, the Natalia being the mystery person just announced on Twitter last night. Like, so, <laughs> uh, who cares? Like, it's just like... What a terrible way to announce something that people were kind of excited to see who it was. And it's like, thanks for the underwhelming, you know, feeling, WWE. Just, it's the way you do it. I mean, I guess it's better than hyping people up and then it's not Paige or it's not Nikki Bella or it's not somebody that you were kind of interested in seeing. It's just Natalia. And at least for her credit, Natalia winds up being the last person that Asuka beats. But yeah, I just, I don't know. This was, it served the purpose in building up Asuka and making her the sole survivor and and that kind of thing. But aside from that, I felt like that, that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, outside, like I said, outside of the interaction between, you know, family members, you know, I, I think other than that, it really, like you said, it was about Oscar. Nothing else really mattered here. You didn't even have any bad will between Sasha Banks and Bailey, which I thought could be kind of teased maybe, you know, maybe Sasha screws up something Bailey was about to do or vice versa, and they kind of have a stare off or something like that, and that didn't happen and really just kind of ended up being about Asuka, and that's fine. Uh, hey, Asuka definitely needs to, to be pumped up even more and more and more because I think if you never watch NXT, you don't know what she can do. And I think we're finally getting a chance to see the Asuka that we know. So that's really, really good. I'm really happy with that and pretty positive. Let's talk about the this old backstage segment with Stephanie coming up here because now she is up two to nothing to the SmackDown team. And so she confronts Daniel Bryan about this and kind of Rubs it in his face and says, look, we're up 2-0. Daniel Bryan basically says, hey, we still got a long show to go, more matches to come. Uh, she, you know, has her interaction with him about John Cena. How do they get John Cena? 
Um, Daniel Bryan, you know, says, well, why did your husband add himself to the match? And <laughs> I love it. She goes, well, you know, he is, you know, the king of kings kind of thing. And I love that Daniel Bryan mentions that he's the same guy I beat at WrestleMania 30. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. That was great. Uh, but the, the more intriguing thing here, Sean, is the fact that she mentions that if Shane is taken out and the Raw team beats him down, well, then the means to SmackDown, the total autonomy is left up to him. He basically runs SmackDown by himself, no Shane. So that left you kind of questioning things a little bit there. I thought that was kind of a nice little touch. Yeah, it certainly makes you intrigued for, okay, what are they trying to get at here? But, yeah, I, I feel like it's just a tease for later, but uh, I, I, I just... I could see the whole thing coming with what was going to happen in that match. So yeah. this only helps things. Yeah, it does for sure. So I'm, you know, we'll get to that when we get to that last March. Uh, let's talk about the Miz and Baron Corbin, and they had this match. And really, what was kind of neat is before the match even started. Uh, we had Maurice out there in the, you know, out in the crowd. She's there to root her husband on in Houston, and I thought that was kind of neat. I didn't think we'd see her, you know, especially since she's pregnant and all that, and being in, you know, harm's way possibly. Uh, but luckily, she was behind the barricade and all that, so no problems there. But still, really cool to see Maurice, and that all was about the Baron Corbin Miz tweet, you know, the whole video. So at least I got that out there. But boy, Sean, it didn't matter how many people were out there to help the Miz. Baron Corbin was able to overcome all that, right? I mean, he took out both Bo Dallas and, uh, you know, Curtis Axel and even the Miz. I mean, sure, it took a little bit more effort, but he was able to take away uh, what the Miz was doing and hit the end of days on him. One, two, three, and the United States champion overcomes the Intercontinental champion. Yeah, I thought this might be one of those where the interference is too much for Corbin and you know all that and Miz winds up winning but they had uh, Baron Corbin win and he got a, a good win after all the stuff that he's been through and I guess that's good for him but eh, you know th this was one of the another one of those this was good but it's also hard to be interested when it's two heels and you're sort of rooting for Miz, too, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> that does make it odd, doesn't it? It kind of makes you kind of a little torn here. Uh, but, you know, I, I like the Miz, right? I, I'm a big fan of his because he can talk really well, and he's just a blast to listen to. So that's the only reason I think you can kind of get behind the Miz. But outside of that, you know, this really was to help Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin needs a big victory like this. And that's what he got. And I think, you know, it, it means more to him to get it. I said this, I believe last week, you know, the Miz could lose every match, but he's still a winner because once he picks up that microphone, you start to hate him all over again. So right. plus he has a really hot wife. So yeah, that always helps. That too. helps yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but he'll be fine. The Miz will move on. Uh, but yeah, so that match took place, and so that means we are Raw two, SmackDown one. Post match, though, you do want to make sure people know this. Uh, Baron Corbin goes up and grabs a microphone, and he basically he says he shut Miz's mouth. You know, he laid him out, and basically uh, now he shut everybody else's mouth up too. So, of course, I got some heat from the crowd. People didn't like that. We also had Paul Heyman backstage kind of talk a little bit more about the match between Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles and really just, once again, sold Brock Lesnar to everyone. So good stuff there. The Bar took on the Usos in a big match here, Sean. And I'll be honest with you. I was really interested in this match. I had a lot of fun watching it. I think they did a great job. You get the Usos getting the victory here. They were able to overcome the bar. I, you know, honestly, for a while there, I thought that Sheamus and Cesaro were going to get the victory. But I, I just really had fun. It seems like the Usos are doing something special here because this wasn't the new day, but they still had a great match. No, uh, it wasn't. But certainly 
they they had a t look these two are just too good right not to have great matches with each other and it's just we knew that this was going to be really good i don't think i had any doubts in my mind that with the usos uh being on a tear that they've been on the bar i think they had something to prove here in that you certainly want to be the that you know you're the top dog champion and uh lots of talk about where these guys are going to be if if Cesaro ever gets to be anything but this spot for him and i i love the near falls uh the, you got pretty much everything these guys do and they put it all together in a, a really good match that kind of brought the show back to the level that it had at the beginning where you're really pumped for things are going this this is a match that had me glued yeah, you just can't help it. I, I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. At the end of the year, if the Usos keep, you know, this up, w we won't probably give them a, the biggest award, uh, maybe uh, of you know wrestler of the year or anything. But I, I've got to give them some kind of point or, or some kind of special award because I, I just don't know why you would not give these guys any credit for all the great work that they put in. Yes, they've had some excellent matches with the, the New Day. That's a given. But they they showed again. I mean that they can really and put they on some their gimmick stuff. too. Which yes, you credit for that. Mm hmm. So I don't know. I'm sure there's an award. I, I, I'm you know not going to sit here and think about all the awards we do at the end of the year. But I'll say this: they're going to get one of them because I'm really impressed with the Usos and what they're doing right now. And this is just another one of those to to make me say yes, gold star, good job, guys. So. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, this match ties everything up between Raw and SmackDown. And, you know, this is, uh, like I said, another match to, to really say, hey, you know, go watch it. So uh, let's talk about Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair. They had a big match. Uh, and, and this is, of course, you know, a champion versus champion match. So lots of things going on in this match to really showcase both women. Uh, I think that they did something to uh, give credit to both brands. And the one thing you'll see in this match is the fact that a lot of the beginning was not so inspiring. It, it was a lot of Alexa Bliss dissing and dumping out of the ring and kind of playing that role of like Kevin Owens kind of does, does right. You know, just kind of avoids and takes advantage of those moments when there's some distraction or just, just really honestly uh, a way to cheat. Um, and Alexa Bliss controls a lot of the beginning of this match, but later on she does not because Charlotte comes back and is able to start getting her offense in and eventually gets the figure eight on. And that is the time where Alexa Bliss decides to give up. She taps out. So Charlotte Flair does win this match between the champions for the women. What did you think about this one, Sean? Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of time. Uh, most of the time you don't. You don't see the women's matches getting almost 16 minutes. I got almost the same amount of time the tag team title match did. And I thought for the most part, uh, this was a, a good match with these two. You had, you know, you, the, what you're seeing a lot is like Charlotte's bigger than Alexa. So she's uh, doing, you know, the bigger moves and uh, Alexa's kind of having to, to counter that where she can and for them you know again for for alexa not always being the best wrestler she certainly proved that she's improving uh she keeps getting better every time i see her in a big match like this and uh, it helps too that her character really shines through when she gets to be the heel and like throw tantrums and <laughs> talk back at charlotte and stuff like that i mean it really puts a lot of a lot of extra into the matches and yeah charlotte gets the win i think as we expected she would but th this was still a good match mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah, yeah you're really you know spot on with the uh, bliss comment because I, I think her and kevin owens must watch the same characters or the same former wrestlers or, or they just kind of take notes uh, off someone similar, or maybe she's just watching Kevin Owens. I just, yeah. I love, you know, Kevin Owens is not a bad guy to be trying to emulate. I mean, the dude mm -hmm. gets his point across. 
Yeah. Just this is the way they're very mouthy in the ring. They avoid. Uh, they take advantage and, and do what they need to do, no matter what anybody else thinks, to, to get the uh, you know upper hand. And I think that a lot of that was able to be showcased. And once again, I think that's what really adds to this match. And you do have that height situation between Charlotte and Alexa that is kind of funny to see. But it still worked out, and they did a good job. So you got to give them credit. But this match actually put SmackDown ahead of Raw. And that was really interesting because, you know, they had to have that big comeback and they did. So three points right off the bat uh, after going down 2-0, which is really good for them. And uh, just a really fun match for the women. Let's move on to the next match that we have here. But then and that this... also made the la- the last match of the before the main event kind of obvious who's going to win because they weren't going to go into that main event with somebody already having won the show. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And we'll definitely talk about that. Uh, let's talk about one of the bigger matches that a lot of people were looking forward to. Uh, you know, and when me and Harry did uh, the, uh, you know, discussion last week, I remember him saying that he thought this was going to be the main event, which they actually didn't do it. Well, I was a little surprised. Brock Lesnar taking on AJ Styles. And boy, Sean, I mean, at the beginning of this, you were starting to question, I think, if AJ was going to get anything in because Brock Lesnar was all over AJ Styles at the beginning of this. AJ was being thrown around like a rag doll. But he did get some offense in, and he actually, for a part of this, you know, did get uh, to look like he could get the victory. He really did, you know, getting the calf crusher on even in this match, which I didn't expect him to do that. And, and I love Brock Lesnar's response to that by bouncing his head off the canvas. Oh, God, that was <laughs> that was Oh, special. that was nasty, though. Mm. Like three clotheslines in a row. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, and the suplexes that AJ was taking were sick. I mean, that looked like yeah, it really Yeah, he sold was. those really well. He was freaking jumping high in the air. And oh, everything. boy. Yeah. So, I mean, did, did really, I mean, I think they did a great job here. You really did feel like at times Brock Lesnar was going to find himself in trouble. But... As always, Brock Lesnar is able to find a way and get the F5 and get the victory. So Raw gets a point here. But boy, I mean, I, it, it may not have been the best match that Brock has had lately or anything, but I still think that they did a good job. I really, really thought that was pretty well done. Oh, no, certainly. Th- this was, I think, everything you wanted it to be uh, with this match. Uh, they gave... Uh, AJ a lot of opportunity to look good against Brock. It wasn't a total beat down like we've seen with other guys. Uh, I, you know, it wasn't on the level I think of like Samoa Joe, or whatever. But it was really close. I mean, he got the moments with the forearm. He he got the two uh, big near falls, uh, hitting that 450, and then the calf crusher spot was really good because Brock sold that really well, making you think that oh man he. He might tap that people got into it, uh, and, and eventually, you know, you knew that what was going to, I think a lot of us could see the the finish coming far away, right? It, it didn't take a rocket scientist to know that probably what was going to happen was what ended up happening. AJ was going to go do the phenomenal forearm, but he gets caught into the F5, and you know, to that credit, they made it look really good. Still, even after we kind of knew what was going to happen, uh, it, it it's still pretty uh, should be commended for for letting them uh, for letting AJ have the the chances that he did. You know, because they could have just absolutely just blasted him or, or whatever to show that Brock was dominant, and they didn't and it made for a great match, a lot of back and forth, and yeah, what what a way to send you into the finale, uh, then with something you're gonna remember. Yeah, I mean, for sure, and you know, like I said, AJ Styles, one of the best performers the WWE has, and he really made a Brock Lesnar match 
that really could have been just overly dominant by Brock look really great, <laughs> even when he wasn't the one winning. I mean, this guy, he knows how to do it. He knows how to sell, but he also knows how to get those good offensive moves in, too. So I, I was just really happy with what we got. Really happy with this one. Uh, so, yes, so we got, you know, the main event here uh, and all tied up. SmackDown and Raw are both the three apiece. And we have these men's Survivor Series teams coming into play. And, boy, I, I'll just say it this way. They they took a lot of time uh, for the match, which, hey, it's normal. But they also took a lot of time for entrances. It's like, boy, every single person well, is getting That was part of the taking time. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I'm just saying, oh, man, it felt like, you know, I was sitting back for music class because there was lots of entrances. Um <laughs> But yes, you know, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It, it, I'm not going to complain. A lot of those interests are really cool. Uh, But yeah, so here, there's a lot here. And so I'm just going to run down a few of the highlights. Uh, You get a chance to see a a few things that you have kind of wanted to see or you may want to see more of in the future, like Nakamura and Finn Balor in the ring together. Oh my God! For the for the short time we got it, I liked uh, I, a lot that Nakamura really wanted to get in for that too. It wasn't just oh they have to be in the ring together. It was Nakamura wanted it. They played it up. That mm-hmm. was good on their part. Oh, very good. And I love the crowd chanting NXT. Then they started chanting New Japan, which WWE probably mm-hmm. didn't like that. <laughs> no, sure they didn't. <laughs> but but it was still a blast, and I love that the. Uh, the uh, the little taunts that they had between each other. Oh, my God. And him and Finn just did a great job. The two sweet on the forehead was fun. Uh, so they had that. Uh, you, you get some other things, even like Triple H and Bobby Roode in the same ring. I, I've always wanted to see that. That was a kind of a fun moment uh you just had had all these different things you know you had kurt angle in the ring with john cena and you know that's where john cena really started getting things going was against kurt angle back in the past so some really cool matchups here uh you know you have some interesting eliminations uh you of course you know had brock uh not brock brom excuse me brom uh kind of taken out of this match for a while when the whole entire smackdown team puts him through a table to keep him out of action for quite a while. So it's just some really good stuff. I don't, I don't want to sit here and break every single thing down. Cause it's just going to take way too long. Yeah. But in, in the end here, let, let's just say it this way. Raw had taken care of business pretty well. Shane McMahon is the last man standing for SmackDown. Hey, you've still got Braun Strowman, Triple H and Kurt Angle for team raw. And you have Braun Strowman, gonna be the guy that takes on Shane McMahon in the ring uh but then uh you have Triple H tag himself in and Triple H is gonna face Shane you know brother-in-law versus brother-in-law uh then Kurt Angle thinks no I'm the GM or I I, I should do this I, I'm Natick Shane I want to be the one that beats him up tags himself in and before you know it you have the situation where Triple H actually gets involved and pedigrees Kurt Angle and puts Shane McMahon on top of him. So that eliminates Kurt. He is out of this match. You have Braun Strowman getting the stare down on Triple H, like, what the heck? What's going on? And then you have Triple H give the pedigree to Shane, get the victory for Team Raw. Triple H is celebrating with Braun. Thanks to everything's hunky-dory. And then you have Braun Strowman attack. Triple H by choking him and putting him in the corner and says, if you ever turn, uh, if you ever cross me again, it'll be the last thing you do. And he turns his back on Triple H. Triple H tries to do the attack. And of course, that means running power slam on Triple H. He gets two of them. And the show goes off the air with Braun Strowman walking off victoriously. So there's a lot here, Sean, a lot of things to run through. But what did you get out of it? What, what did, did you enjoy, not enjoy well, I wasn't too big a fan of all the the guys that, yeah, sure, most of them are older. But the guys that have been your NXT talents that you've done the, supposed to be your stars or whatnot, kind of being treated like afterthoughts. Like Nakamura and Rude are your first two eliminated. And I get the story with Randy Orton and Shane McMahon being the, at the end. Right there, Randy Orton has all the history with Triple H. 
Shane McMahon is Triple H's uh, brother-in-law. Uh, you know, Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle have the feud with the, being the, you know, opposing GMs, commissioners, whatever. And I forgot about Braun being there until he came back on the apron. So I just, I, I, there was some really good spots in the match. I just feel like the air kind of went out of the building when you're eliminating the guys people really want to see. And then you're having the older guys surveil here, and I, I get you're trying to tell a story and and all that, but it's just like, do we really want to see Triple H Kurt Angle again? It's like that happened in like 2000. Do we got to relive that again? Mm-hmm. It's like I get, I get the Triple H is the standard bearer, right? That okay, if you have a match with Triple H, then you're you can go have a match with other guys, and and that's fine. But it's just like ugh. I don't know. It's just. I'm glad that Braun was there at the end and he got to look strong and they are telling a story with that, rebuilding Braun. I think that's good. we got to remember that he's a, you know, performance center product coming from the outside. He's not an indie guy, so they're going to – and he's, for to his credit, he's more over than almost half that Raw roster. So, uh, you know, they, they do need to rebuild him because he's one of the guys that WWE can bank on and all that, but it's just like – I don't know. The way that they did it, just it leaves an entire sour taste in your mouth, and it was just like, it came off like a wet fart in church. Like, just, oh, okay, Triple H is cheating on, or he's about to screw over Kurt Angle. Okay. It's like a slow thing happening. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, I could totally tell that what's going to happen is that Triple H is going to wind up pinning Shane, and yep. That happened. And so it's just like, after all the good stuff that you had in the build-up to this final match, this final match kind of hits like a ton of bricks. Just great. This is how we end things. Very uh, lackluster. Yeah, you're, you're right on that. It, you know, it's kind of funny to say that. But, you know, it's like buying a 20-ounce Coke, right? And, and you're sitting there and you're enjoying it. It's really good. And... Until you get to the last part of it, and it's kind of warm because you've been drinking it for about 30 minutes now, or however long it takes you to drink a Coke, or 10 minutes, whatever. And you know how that is. You kind of like that last drink, and you're like, oh, that's not so great. That's kind of the way this is. Like, the last part, just that just was not so great. And you're exactly right, Sean. It did kind of take the air out of the room, and no one was really super excited. Braun Strowman walking away victorious. Sure, that's nice. It's, it's okay. But still, it doesn't give you what you wanted. We, we, you know, in this match, I didn't mention this, but we had Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn get involved and really just start beating down Shane to kind of cause more problems for Shane. Uh, but that was kind of an exciting moment. Now, if you would have had something like, not maybe for say those guys, but some other new person or something else happen in the match to, to conclude it, maybe that gets the crowd excited again to change it up. But not Triple H doing what he did, not the way it all worked out. It just kind of put a flat end to this thing, and that sucks. That's really a bummer because I think overall well, we got a pretty you know good product from this show. Um, so just kind of a bummer. But I think, like you said, Sean, it's all about storyline. We'll be watching Monday Night Raw. We'll be breaking down that, and, and that's what we're really – I kind of consider that the end part of Survivor Series was just the start of Raw. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, but that's how a lot of these go anymore. It's just it's a big advertisement for you to watch the next show, and I guess they that accomplish its goal. But I just it sucks because it was actually going strong, and then it just kind of died. Yeah, I'm right there with you. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, you know, what happens in your main event here in the Survivor Series match. And, uh, just really, you know, uh, I, we got to put a bow on this thing, but, uh, you do know that Raw does technically win this thing four to three in the Survivor Series 2017 matchup. So there you go, guys. Sean, what do you got this thing rated? Uh, I'm going to go with like a six and a half. Uh, I think. Or, well, you know, if you throw out all the stuff on the pre-show, which doesn't really matter, 
actually, I'll go more like a seven. Actually, the the main event really kind of sours things, but the rest of the show was was really good. It was you know you had some good to great. You had two great matches, and I think you have to commend them for that. But then you kind of got just some kind of some good in the middle. Uh, some really good with the uh, tag team title match. Actually, you know what? I think I'll go with a seven and a half after that. So you get you get the really good match with uh, Cesaro and Sheamus and the Usos. You get uh, two matches that you need to go out of your way to watch, which is the Shield and uh, the New Day. A, a great match to start the show and a great match that almost ends the show or pro- maybe should have ended the show in AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. And then, yeah, you have some uh, good stuff in between. Uh, there before you get to the main event that kind of sours things so seven and a half final grade for me yeah and i know hey i'm gl- glad you uh came up to where i was too because that's what i had this thing rated seven and a half and I-, I think to me there was a lot more good than bad on this show it really really was i don't even cre- create the the idea that the pre-show even matters in this because really this main part of the show just had so many solid moments, had so many things that you kind of consider maybe not all of them are dream matches, but there are some dream matches that were kind of teased here and you really got excited about. And then, of course, you know, the really solid performances all the way around for most of the matches. So I have no complaints. I, I, I get it. They're telling stories. They're getting things ready for their own brands following Survivor Series, which, hey, you got to do. So maybe those things took away or even added to this show. But I think overall, you got a really good show. You got something you can kind of hang your hat on and say, this was not disappointing. This was a lot of fun. And I I was really uh, enjoying it when I watched it live. And now that I'm sitting here reviewing, I'm still thinking about it in more positive tones. So. But there you go. That is our rating, and that is, of course, Survivor Series 2017, and we appreciate you guys joining us. We've had so much fun. This is a lot of fun to to, to really do, and we hope you all enjoy all the review shows. Make sure you go check out W2Mnet.com. That's the place where you'll go find all your great wrestling needs and a lot more, but that's just it's just – awesome to be able to find out what other people think we love to see what you guys think and it's not just us but there are other podcasts on the w2mnet.com website that you can go find that give you reviews uh set up you know give you some previews to the big shows coming up your way so go do that make sure you go check all of them out go ahead and rate review and subscribe over at wrestling of the max or the w2m network whichever one you choose uh, and make sure you don't forget to go give some love to Formula1Mania.com and last word on ProWrestling.com, other great sites that support us. We appreciate them. Uh, but yes, uh, make sure you tune in to Wrestling to the Max this week. We are going to be doing some special things. We'll be doing a double dose of Ring of Honor. We'll also be getting a live perspective on both TakeOver and Survivor Series because Paul was there live He got a chance to sit in the crowd on both shows, so he'll be talking about some things that happened behind the scenes and, of course, give us some reactions, you know, as being a participator of the crowd. Uh, And, you know, make sure you uh, enjoy all the things that are coming up this week. This is, of course, Thanksgiving week, so make sure you check out Dress Under the Max, that first episode, because it'll probably be the only episode for this week. So, Well, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. I am Gary Vaughn. He is Sean Garmer, and we'll catch you guys down the road. Later. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.